find your own style. How do you find it? I want my own style. Please tell me. I want this secret. I want to be special and unique. I need the style now. I have to have it. Well, how do you find your own style? I get this question quite a bit, certainly. And I can really only share my thoughts on it, rather than give a direct tutorial or presentation style explanation on how to find your style. It's strange that I still get this question because I feel like it's answered a million times in other podcasts, videos, Instagram posts, Twitter, the list goes on. But, but, you know, I suppose people want to hear different perspectives, which is fine. It's fine. It's okay. All right. So finding your own style, my thoughts. Well, let's rewind for a bit back to, I don't know, 2006 before I, before I went to art school. It's quite the year, 2006. That's when I uh, graduated high school. Boomer. Yeah, 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 I know. I was uh, obsessed with a lot of comic book artwork, you know, by J. Scott Campbell, Joe Mad, Michael Turner. Uh, and then later on, later on, towards the end of high school, I really fell in love with the digital painting world, especially works by like Craig Mullins, Jamie Jones, Sparth, David Levy, David, Le David, David Levy, David Levy. Okay, I can speak. The list goes on. So, uh, really liking their work. Without YouTube or anything like that, all I could do was stare at their work and try to understand what the heck was going on. How did they paint like that? Why did they choose these colors? What is, what is the exact formula to do what they do? And how do I learn it? I need it. I then was exposed to artwork by Ian McKaig, Luke Hollis, and other artists like Bjorn Hurry. Um, and I wanted to draw like them. I wanted to desperately draw like them. Wait, I, wa I desperately wanted to draw like them. I think that would be the correct syntax for that sentence. Anyway, moving on. Um, so I wanted to draw like them, but I also wanted to paint like, you know, Mullins and Jamie Jones and all those guys. Uh, I don't know if I was deliberately trying to make my own style, uh, but I, at the time, at the very least, I became obsessed with learning it all. So fast forward to today, uh, well nowadays, when I look at my work, what I see uh, is that I, I see I see traces of, of all those artists that I studied and copied over and over again. You know, it's, it's kind of strange to me because uh, often I'm told, yeah, when I see a, a new piece by you, I don't even have to look at the name. I know it's yours. You have a style. And I suppose I can see what they mean regarding proportions, composition, pencil work, shape design, uh, color choices, and all that stuff. Um, but where they see my quote-unquote style, what I see are all the influences that I copied over and over again, all those influences coming through. Um, in a way, it's like a, like a, an amalgamation. And so when I say I feel like this has been talked about over and over again, you know, if you watch the Draftsman podcast with Stan Prokopenko and Marshall Vandruff, um, you know, they talk about this idea of art parents. You know, when you're developing your understanding and your fundamentals, like try to have art parents of like existing artwork that you like and copy it, study it, analyze it, you know, look at it reverse. Like what are the color palettes? How come they use this range of values? What about, you know, the mood, the style, even the subject matter, right? So, you know, that's, that's often mentioned in their podcasts. Anyway, so from 2006 till now, that's kind of the story of my quote unquote style. Uh, and the reason I'm saying all this is I don't think I was ever aiming to have some kind of unique style, like some kind of deliberate attempt to stand out as a unique something or other. Instead, I was carried by my unrelenting obsession with wanting to understand how things are done. Of course, I did go to art school to learn the fundamentals like perspective, draw through, design theory, and all that stuff. But... That doesn't really teach style. It's, I think, the mileage and the influences that do that. Anyway, real quick, I do want to 
uh, take a look at today's sponsor from uh, Ridge Wallet. Hi. This video is brought to you by Ridge Wallet. It's light, sleek, industrial, doesn't fold awkwardly or bulge in your pocket, and it seriously changed my whole pocket situation. Most people are still using these big old clunky wallets, carrying around old receipts, gift cards, hotel keys, and so unorganized. How pathetic, I don't like it. You don't need to take up this much real estate in your pants, okay? <laughs> it holds up to 12 cards, plus room for cash. Got a little clip here for the cash. There's over 30 colors and styles, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium, which is what I have. I've already gotten used to it and I can say I like it. There's over 30,000 five-star reviews. The durable material means each wallet comes with a lifetime warranty. You could buy this one wallet and carry it for life. The Ridge team is so confident that you'll like it. They'll let you test drive it for 45 days and you could send it back for a full refund if you don't love it. I mean, I've been making a lot of switches these days. I switched from a tablet to an actual screen tablet to draw on, been eating way healthier, and just my life is just slightly shifted in a, in, a, in a positive direction. And this is just one more thing to add to that. It is made with RFID blocking technology that protects you from digital pickpocketers. And it is something I thought of before because sometimes you can pay by tapping your card and you don't want them to be stealing your money, do you? But this has protection for that. Get 10% off today with uh, free worldwide shipping and returns by going to ridge.com forward slash Ahmed, A-H-M-E-D. That's ridge.com forward slash A-H-M-E-D and use the code Ahmed, A-H-M-E-D. The link is in the description. These numbers are secrets and don't look at them. <laughs> and we're back. So back to this whole topic on style. You know, I think... I think this is where we have to define what style even is. And it might be different for different people. But if we just real quick hop right back into that time machine. But this time we're going to your early classrooms. You know, back where you're learning to write your first letters. Or whatever it is that you learned at the age of four and five. You know, it depends on what country you're in. Um, but your first alphabet, your first letters or characters or um, Arabic letters, whatever they probably weren't the most amazing calligraphy or typography, right? So, you know, instead they're more like a, a nascent attempt at placing lines and curves to make recognizable letters and say, look, mom, I did ABC. Um, they probably, probably looked like sloppy, scribbly, shaky, clear signs of early attempts. And there's nothing wrong with that. So... After many years of mileage, your handwriting ability is probably much better than your first day of school. At least I hope. I don't know. I've seen I've seen some of y'all's uh, some of y'all's handwriting. I'm just like, did you? You should probably practice more. Anyway, so you might have even written so much that your handwriting is well, you know, nice to look at. You might even have studied uh, typography and calligraphy, which then clearly will eventually seep into your own handwriting naturally. Um, and eventually, by doing that, your handwriting will have its own style. So to define style, at least how I would define it, would be that it's mileage plus multiple influences from different sources, external sources. These, these are things you've probably heard of over and over again, right? Um, and despite all that, you may still feel this extremely desperate yearning to immediately have a unique and special style. And if you feel that, my advice to you, well, it's to forego even wanting to have unique style. Forget it. Just move on. Don't focus on that. Instead, direct your attention to increasing the mileage of drawing studying the fundamentals, learning new things, and allowing multiple influences to seep through. Study your favorite artists, copy their work over and over again. Perhaps include a wild card. If you're a 2D illustrator, or you know, a drafts, uh, drafts person, um, perhaps study some artwork that you don't particularly like, but you know, you might learn something from, like very old ancient tapestries. You know, Mongolian something or other. I don't know. Just find something. Draw it. See what happens. You never know uh, how you personally would interpret those things and how those things would show up in your own work. You know, if you do that over a period of time, 
what ends up happening is uh, suddenly people will be coming to you asking you, please tell me how to find my style. In which case, uh, when they ask you that, direct them to this video so that I get more views. All right, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, th that's just my quick thoughts on, on the topic as uh, recently the question was brought up and I thought I'd talk about it and show some, some uh, scribbles here on YouTube. Anyway, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think about finding your own style down in the comments. Um, and enjoy your day.